Hey guys, I'm Amarat and in this video I will show you another tool I have created. In Amarat's tools you can find this game object generator and I will describe now what is it good for and which problems it helps us solve. So there are two basic problems. The first one is when you create a bunch of custom models or you retroport some new models from different expansions and so on. So you basically are uh, placing multiple models into Ref Audio Chicken game client, which means that you are quite likely, well, you quite likely want to create some game objects for them so you can spawn them in game. And uh, doing that for every single object you create or report is quite tedious and time consuming and it's also very repetitive uh, work. So that's the first problem. The second problem is that when you, for example, open Model Viewer, and let's say that you want to spawn some objects, some game objects, into some sort of building. So you've got an empty building, and you want to spawn game objects into it. So you want to fill it with furniture, basically, or something like that. So let's say that we want some sort of wardrobe. OK, so we've got some wardrobes here. And now the problem is that we know our model, we've got some model we want to spawn in-game, we've got its name, but there is no guarantee that there is also game object which has the same name. So it's hard for us to find game object which actually uses this particular model. So we need to find this, mod this model in uh, game object display in 4DBC to find display IDs which use this uh, model and then we need to find game objects which you know, use those display IDs. Again, tedious process and quite unpleasant. So you might want to have uh, game objects which have the same name as models that they use and uh, you want to have game objects and game object display IDs for all models you've got in your game client. So that's the second problem. And doing so by hand is quite, well, impossible. So that's uh, where my tool comes. So the first thing we will need is our game object display info. So I will use Blizz like one just for demonstration. We've got uh, group display info. I'm probably blind right now. I'm blind or is it? Here it is. Okay, I was just blind. So we need to get to get game object display info and we will convert it to CSV again. I will use just this quick CSV converter because it works for this. Otherwise, I would recommend you to use WDBX editor. So we've got the CSV file. I will just check if it isn't corrupted. It seems to be alright. And when we got this CSV file, we will need to get a list file. A uh, list file will contain all our models we want to insert into our database and into our GeoG display in 4DBC. So let's get some uh, some list file. Let's use, for example, this one. So I've got my custom MPQ with models I have created, with models well, there are some custom models, as you can see here. Uh, there are some MTUs, some WMOs, and uh, there might be some retroported models as well. As you can see, there are some expansion 5 things in my uh, Ref Audio Chicken game client. So I have imported new models into game. So I want to get them into my uh, display info DBC and into my database as well. So I will get this list file and now I will run generate. Uh, so this CSV file of DBC should be in the same folder as generator. Now I will choose just input list file. That's this one. Uh, I will fill in my database connection no, information. So local database, I want to log in under root and it will be word test database, game object template, I leave this, port I will leave it like this. Well, start display ID. Uh, it has automatically uh, used display ID, which is 
free, which is the last one and which is free. So 9624, that's the last Blizz like display ID, which is uh, in DBC and I don't have any custom display IDs here. So it will, so it will just select some value which is free, which is the last one, which is free. Okay, start and trip. You don't, by the way, you don't need to change this. You can just leave it as it is. You don't have to worry about this at all, unless you want to have uh, your display ID starting at some specific number. Start entry. Well, uh, the script will, well, to create game object, you need two things, basically. You need to uh, get some sort of display ID, but also some sort of entry, because you will be inserting them into database as well. Uh, this start and turn uh, is recommended by me, or in general, I would recommend you to use any sort of number which has at least six digits, okay? We, uh, our display IDs will have four or five digits, so this should have six at least. And what will happen? It will uh, sum uh, display ID and entry to get final entry. So, for example, uh, game object which will get this display ID will get this entry which is obviously this so this will be final entry of game object which is this display id so you can just by taking a look uh, at its entry uh, know what is its display id so if you want to let's let's say that you will find some game object in game by using lookup command and you want to create its copy uh, or another version of it uh, which has the same display ID. Well, you can get its display ID just by taking a look at its entry because you know that 4 is start digit and then it's 0 and 9625 it's, is its display ID. So this is quite a nice system. I would recommend you to use either, either 6 digits or 7 digits long number. Uh, this is just fine because uh, if you take a look into this like uh, game object database well this is the last entry which is taken so that's why i have chosen uh, 400,000. so basically those two values you can leave them at the default values but you might want to change them let's just test connection it works okay uh, insert or replace well if you you check use insert it will only insert the uh, objects which aren't there, uh, which means that if you have, let's say that you would have any sort of game object in that range. So you will start at for uh, 400,000. Let's duplicate this just to show you what I mean. So this game object now is in our way, it is in on that uh, in uh, in at those IDs we will be creating uh, our game objects on, so there might be collision. Okay, uh, so basically what this determines is if that game object will get overwritten by our script, or if our script will just uh, ignore it and uh, attempt to insert another game objects behind it and leave this as it is. I would recommend you to use replace uh, so all game objects will be inserted without any issues and uh, it will also help you with you know keeping your all your stuff at one place so I would uh, recommend you to use replace but insert is safer because if you use insert you won't lose any data this will replace overwrite any data in this range where we will be creating game objects on so just make sure that you don't have any data in that range you are inserting game objects to or just use replace to overwrite those data because you because those that data isn't supposed to be there at all. Just keep that range clean or use replace. Perfects of names. Well, game object names will be their model names. So let's say that we've got model name like this. So let's open our list file it will be better probably well this is full model name let's open it in 
No, but this is full model name. So my script will do this. It will delete a path to our model and it will use this as a name of a game object. Well, you might want to use these prefixes and postfixes. So let's say that we want this prefix generated and space character. So it will now add this generator in front of uh, that uh, model name. And let's uh, use postfix as well, space character. And let's write, for example, don't edit. So whoever would uh, take a look at the, this game object, they will just know that it is generated game object, which was generated by this tool. And he knows that he isn't supposed to edit it. Well, because if you would uh, rename that game object, you, was, you would lose that game object, which has the same name as its model name. So uh, you would return to problem that you've got uh, models you can't find as game objects. This is just my recommendation. Do something like this, some sort of prefix, which marks those game objects as generated or whatever, and some postfix which says to your GMs or whoever else who has access to the database that they aren't supposed to edit them. Uh, if, you, if they want to, you know, use that game object for, for something, they should make its copy uh, out of this range of entries you are uh, creating your game objects on and use that head duplicate, basically. Okay, again, my recommendation. So we got this all set and we can just click on generate. And what this has done now is that it has created game objects, as you can see. It has inserted a prefix there, space character, as I have inserted there. It has used model name and it has added postfix as, postfix as well into uh, name. It has also chosen correct type, so 14 are WMOs. 5 are M2s. It has also used, as you can see, this entry and this display ID. So you can just uh, tell what is its display ID just by taking a look at uh, uh, game objects entry. And it has basically chosen just default values for data and default size or scale 1. As you can see, it has also ignored group WMOs. It has uh, only created game objects for root WMOs. And yet another thing, it has also filtered our list file because as you can see, this list file is actually full of different files. There are BLP files, there are NM files, and so on. There are skin files, there are group WMO files, yes, skin files, and so on. And it has ignored all those files. It has used only MTUs and only WMOs. It has ignored ADTs, everything. It has used only WMOs and only MTUs. And in our display uh, info, DBC, as you can see, it has also overwritten MTU extensions to MDX. That's what you are supposed to do when you are inserting any model paths into DBCs in general when it comes to MTUs. So as you can see, it works perfectly fine. Uh, it has generated my game objects. Now I can just convert the CSV back to DBC. And I've got my DBC here with my models. And you can do this with your custom uh, patch, uh, with list file from your custom patch. So you will get game objects for all models in your patch. But you can do the same basically with your uh, Blitz like with MPQs as well. So let's go to data and let's use, for example, Lich King MPQ. And you can get list file of Blitz like MPQ as well. And you can run the same script for that list file as well. So you can do this for all uh, Blitz like MPQs. And when you do this, you will get game objects for every single MTU and WMO model in game. That comes in handy, I would say. Well, you might want to filter those list files first a little bit so you don't get uh, generated game objects for, for example, I don't know, 
let's say that you don't want game objects for expansion one models well in that case uh, you can use this uh, toolkit to filter that stuff okay so here's this filter uh, I want to show you how to use it now I think it's quite self-explanatory so we can use this filter here with paths to filter those list paths as well so that's it pretty much this is the way of generating uh, hundreds or even thousands of new game objects and game object display ids as well for any sort of models either blizz like models or for your custom models if you need to so thanks for watching guys i hope this was useful for you you can by the way get this gob generator in my tool pack or you can download it uh, from mcnet uh, there is dedicated uh, tool for download there so you can get it from there as well so uh, i hope this was useful for you happy morning guys